And they put this strap around his ankle because inside was the golden incense, the altar was in there. And, and then it was like the cherubim, you know, the, the, the statue of, of, of that was in there, but it was like a mercy seat. And inside this mercy seat was the tablets. You know, it was Aaron's um, staff that, that was budded. And they, there was the manna, the manna that they poured out, the manna, the word of God. It was poured out as bread. They were only supposed to take it every single day because you can't get today's word yesterday. You can't get today's word yesterday. Why am I saying that? Because it doesn't matter how much word we get. Every day we need a fresh fresh, fresh word from God. Amen. There's so many dimensions of what God's trying to say in the word of God. But inside, where the mercy seat was on top in the Ark of the Covenant, one man that was chosen by Lot, okay? So Aaron, as we know, he would go in, you know, once a year and offer the sins of the people. But it was all these ceremonies, all this outside cleansing. God was supposed to show us now. They went through all these rituals, everything that they had to do. I know a lot of um, pastors and a lot of churches and a lot of ministries don't want to talk about the Old Testament because they said, we're under the new covenant. But you get a deeper revelation of who Jesus Amen. is and who we are in him when you also bring the Old Testament into it. Mm -hmm. So I thought with this, what I'm doing here with these six meetings, I just wanted to bring a foundation tonight that said there's nothing more important than us to have the revelation of the blood of Jesus Christ and what he has done for each one of us. There's nothing more important. Nothing. Amen. And then we'll build on uh, the, the Holy Spirit and, and, and lots of teachings. But when we carry the gospel as glory carriers, when we carry the treasure of the gospel inside of us, God has taken this word and imparted this word into our hearts by the power of the Holy Spirit so we can pour it out on everybody around us. That is the glorious treasure. That is the glorious, um, that is the glorious gospel that lives inside of us. That's what, that's what's so much glory. People want the glory of God. They're always looking for the glory. They, they want this incredible, we have the glory of God. The gospel. When, the, when I'm having a bad day, I start decreeing who Jesus is. I start decreeing and declaring the word of God. Every, every name I can think of, of who he is. And the glory of God is revealed. It's in the gospel. The glory's in the gospel. And so as we get the gospel inside of us, Everything changes, and that's what I'm going to read to you. 2 Corinthians chapter 2. <laughs> Isn't this fun tonight? Yes. <laughs> this is fun tonight. Isn't it? Yes. The blood of Jesus. Yes. The blood of Jesus. That's what we're talking about tonight. So it talks about here, starting 2 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 12. I'm going to read through this. And I'm going to talk about it. It's so amazing. I'm going to start at 2.14. But thanks be to God, who always leads us in triumphal procession in Christ, and through us spreads everywhere the fragrance of the knowledge of Him. Amen. There's a fragrance that we carry. There's a fragrance that we carry of the knowledge of Him. We're not talking about all different kinds of things in the Word of God. The Word of God's living, active, and powerful. But it's the knowledge of Jesus. The more we get to know Him, the more He releases His presence through the Holy Spirit, the, the revelation of the Word of God, that's when our life changes. Spreads everywhere the fragrance of the knowledge of Him. Now listen closely. For we are to God the aroma of Christ. Among those who are being saved and those who are perishing. So what is he saying here? There's two aromas. There's one that a 
are being saved and there's one that's perishing. The Bible says every time you see the word perishing, that means that you're not on the road to heaven. You're not on the narrow road that the Bible says in Matthew 7, only a few find it. I mean, it's like work out your salvation with fear and trembling. You know, it's amazing. I mean, God is, is revealing his son to us. So there's an aroma of Christ among those who are being saved and those who are perishing. To the one we are the smell of death, and to the other the fragrance of life. That's what the Bible says here. And who is equal to such a task? Unlike so many, we do not peddle the word of God for profit. The word of God, when you're not taking the word of God seriously. When you're peddling the word of God to make a huge income or whatever you want to be famous, Jesus is the one who we're making famous. Amen. It's not being haphazard with your ministry, knowing the great responsibility that you have to share Jesus Christ, each one. Un unlike so many, we do not peddle the word of God for profit. On the contrary, in Christ, we speak before God with sincerity like men sent from God. It's amazing. It's just amazing. So um, I'm going to just read here chapter 3, verse 1. Are we beginning to commend ourselves again? Or do we need, like some people, letters of recommendation to you or from you? You yourselves are a letter written on our hearts, known and read by everybody. Is that amazing? We have the gospel living in us. He has written his word on our minds and in our hearts. It says it up in Hebrews. This is amazing. It's written on our hearts, known and read by everyone. You show that you are either, you are a letter from Christ, the result of our ministry, written not with ink, but with the Spirit of the living God. It's supernatural. We can't have this unless the Holy Spirit imparts the Word of God into our hearts. Amen. This is what it says here. But with the Spirit of the living God, not on tablets of stone, but on tablets of the human heart. Amen. See, the law was on the stones. It was sprinkled with blood. It was the law came so we would know sin, the Ten Commandments. Men added 663 more traditions. But God came so people would know sin. But everything was pointing to Jesus. Every single thing was pointing to Jesus. It was the blood. He was saying that there was nobody, there was nobody, and I mean nobody today, nobody, that can overcome sin except through the power of the blood of Jesus. Amen. There's nobody that can overcome. Look at our world. Look at all the pride. Look at everything that's going on. You know, I mean, everywhere. It's never been so great of a time as we're living in right now. I mean, the end is, it is like Weezy said, we got to prepare. It's written on our hearts, known and read by everyone. You show that you are a letter from Christ. Okay, written not with ink, but with the Spirit of the living God. So amazing on our hearts. Such confidence as this is are, are through Christ before God. Not that we are confident in ourselves to claim anything for ourselves, but our confidence comes from God. Amen. He has made us confident as ministers of the new covenant, not of the letter but of the Spirit, for the letter kills, but the Spirit gives life. Now, of course, we love the Word of God that are letters. So what is he saying about the letter versus the Spirit of God? What he's saying is that you will not understand the Word of God. You will have knowledge in your mind, but you will not have knowledge in your heart. The Word of God will not be alive without the Holy Spirit. Amen. The New Covenant is the Spirit of God breathing on the pages as when we get born of God, we will understand the Word of God. Amen. The first in, the first, and the most important role of the Holy Spirit, I'm going to do two sessions on the Holy Spirit. The first 
most important role of the Holy Spirit is that He reveals Jesus to us. Who He is, how great He is. Not only does He reveal what He's done and who He is today, He's, he's telling us about the future. How many people in the churches today have no idea where they're going? They have no idea about what heaven's going to be like. They have no idea how to prepare themselves to see the bridegroom. They have no idea. This ministry is Revelation 19 ministry because it's all about the bride and the bridegroom. As I try to prepare, as I go forth and try to bring revelation knowledge to everyone that sits under this teaching, that every single one, no matter what your gifts are, no matter what your talents are, no matter what your call is, we're all to be prepared to see Jesus face to face. Amen. Amen. That's the most important thing in our life. But um, anyway, so in here in chapter 3, I'm just going to, because I wanted to go and um, show you something else here in the Word tonight. There was a veil over Moses as he, as he came down off the mountain with the Ten Commandments. And the veil he had over his face. He had so much glory, but that glory was fading away. Because God said, we are in a new ministry under a new covenant. And the glory was leaving the old covenant. The old way of doing things. All the shed blood of all those animals that brought forgiveness of sins. But none of it could break the power of sin. I'm going to tell you a very profound thing tonight. That I said to my husband earlier. <laughs> this is profound. God healed in the Old Testament. Amen. I am the God that heals. God was prosperous in the Old Testament. He, he prospered Abraham, Isaac, Jacob. There was a lot of people, Solomon. They prospered. People were healed left and right. And Jesus didn't shed his blood yet. God was healing. What is the difference between the Old Testament and the New Testament. What came by Jesus shedding his blood on the cross? What is it? I mean, if he healed and people's sins got forgiven and they could stand before a holy God, because once a year Aaron went in every single day in the tabernacle, they shed blood, they shed blood, they had the bread on the table. People lived for, for God back then, from the time they got up to the time they went to bed. When Jesus died on the cross, he broke the power of sin. Right. There was no, nothing, there was nothing in the Old Testament that shows. What it shows is that people could overcome sin. That is, that's a revelation. You know, we're saying, oh, Jesus died on the cross for the forgiveness of our sins. He broke the power of sin. When he died and came up out of that grave, we have a new life in him. We can walk holy, set apart, and hate sin and love righteousness. It says it in 2 Corinthians um, that we are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. What God was trying to say, I can't, it says it in Hebrews, it, it, he tells us, I have to bring a new covenant. Because the people can't overcome sin. Jesus had to die on the cross so that sin could be broken. How many people do we know that are addicted to drugs, addicted to alcohol, addicted to pornography, addicted to all the things that they can't get away from? But if they would get born again, and God, by his, Jesus by his blood, it says it in Hebrews 10, he cleanses the conscience by his blood. He washes us with his word. And without being born again by the power of the Holy Spirit that lives in us, each one of us in this room can overcome the power of sin in our life. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Hallelujah. 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 He broke the power of sin at the cross. Yes. Woo-hoo! I mean, it's like... I always say, like in a prayer line, or when we're praying for people, come on up here. You know, come on up here. We're always applying the blood of Jesus. We're always praying for the, for the blood of Jesus to be applied, that people would be truly set free and delivered from every sin that easily ensnares them.